Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred We Died Laughing and I'm here to talk about audiobooks this week. Um, so I just wanted to talk about a few audiobooks that I've read this year and ones that I really, really enjoyed. Now I'm not a huge audiobook reader. I normally listen to one audiobook every two to three weeks um, because I generally just listen to audiobooks when I'm off the train, when I'm walking to and from work from the train. Um, I, When I'm on the train I will almost always be reading my book unless I'm at a busy time and I end up standing then I'll probably be listening to an audiobook or a podcast normally a bookish podcast but there were some audiobooks this year that I really really enjoyed I think this year overall has been my best year over the last few years with audiobooks I only started listening to audiobooks within the last two years um I used to like if you told me a few years ago that I that I would be able to listen to and love an audiobook I would have told you like no way like that will not happen now I'm a huge audiobook listener I always need to have some audiobook on the go I always need to have one and I love it now I really really enjoy listening to these audiobooks. First audiobooks I want to talk about is one I listened to at the start of the year and that was Sophia Khan is not obliged by Aisha Malik and this was read by Rita Sharma. Now this is like normally in kind of like a diary form or almost like blog entry forms. So that ended up actually being pretty interesting in terms of listening to it narrated these specific blog posts by Rita Sharma um, as Sophia. Um, the only problem I had with this audiobook was that now and again there would be text so it would be a little bit choppy in terms of who was talking. So it would be Sophia blah blah blah, another person's name blah blah blah, Sophia blah blah blah. And like sometimes that would get a little bit annoying and sometimes there'd be time dates read out and stuff like that, timestamps I should say, read out. Um, and that was a little bit, that could get a little bit irritating. But overall I just really, really enjoyed this book on audio. I thought Rita Sharma did a really, really good job in just portraying Sophia's voice and just her fun and just all the crazy drama going on in her life. I just thought it was like one of these books that really, really suited audiobook format. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. And I should actually say, I should have said, at the start. I don't have an Audible account at the moment because all of my audiobooks I actually listen to on my library's Borrowbox app. Um, so I get all of them through my library and it's perfect for me. I Because I don't listen to loads at the same time, I generally you know, I always have some kind of audiobook that I'm interested in that I find on my library app. Um, and it, my library app has actually been pretty good in terms of new releases as well. So it's like really, really handy. Um, so I just wanted to say that I don't have an Audible account. Um, I do think maybe in the future I might get one. Um, but right now I just, I actually don't need one. The next audiobook I want to talk about is My Life as a White Trash Zombie by Diana Rowland. And this one was read by Alison McLemore. Um, and this one was a really, really, really fun book. Um, this is obviously a better girl who ends up being transformed into a zombie she's living in this like really southern state I don't know whether she's in Texas but she, or Georgia or somewhere like that but she's in somewhere that's very very southern in the states um, and Alison McLemore did this really really strong southern American accent and obviously myself I'm more used to kind of a more neutral American accent I would say like you know what you'd see on tv shows and movies and stuff like that um and it actually took me, I normally listen to audiobooks on, on a pretty high speed, like with three being the highest, I'm normally listening at two, two or 2.5 um, speed. So, you know, I'm normally listening to them very, very fast, which is why for the at least amount of time that I do read audiobooks, I generally get them finished within two to three weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually had to slow this one down. I had to slow down a good bit just like for the first few chapters, first four or five chapters, because I found her accent so thick, which is obviously means that it was really well done. Um, but I did have to slow it down and really listen to the story for a while until I got used to the way she talked and used to all the, the names and just the different kind of phrases and stuff like that in this southern accent. And then I was able to speed it up and go back to normal and absolutely love this one. Another book that I absolutely adored an audiobook was Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine. And this one was read by Lucy Gaskell and Morvan Christie. So there's two different um, voices in this one for the two different girls who are the main characters in this book. Um, and this is obviously a world war two story and, and it's about this one woman called Julie who is actually captured by the Nazis um, in in Nazi occupied France um, and we're getting her story and we're getting kind of a backstory from her while she's under like arrest um, and she's being interrogated by the Nazis and then the second half of the book is told through a her friends um her friends point of view and this one was just amazing so good 
like they just did the the accents um julia's scottish so the uh, there's a scottish accent and then i'm not sure where the other character was from but she had a specific accent as well and it was just done so well and i was just so hooked onto this book i just did not want to put this this audiobook down i could not stop listening to it absolutely amazing really 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 recommend this one on audiobook this one was probably one of my favorite ones on audiobook um and i definitely want to listen to i know there's another book that's a little bit similar by elizabeth wine which is rose under fire i think it's called and my library app does have that one so that is one that i do have my eye on um that i'll hopefully be um taking out pretty soon and listening to that one as well because I really really enjoyed this one. Another book that I read on audiobook was actually a reread for me and it was Under the Hawthorne Tree by Marita Conlon McKenna and this one was read by Caroline Lennon um, and these are books that I read. I read Under the Hawthorne Tree and Wildflower Girl so both of these were both read by Caroline Lennon and Under the Hawthorne Tree is the first in the series and Wildflower Girl is the second in the series. Um, so I read both of these and these are both set in particular times in Irish history and they're following the members of the one family and um, so Under the Hawthorne Tree is set during one of the Irish famines, one of the very very bad Irish famines in the 1840s um, and we're seeing these three children being left alone by their parents. Their parents have obviously died somewhere they don't know where they are and um, they decide that they have to travel across the country to try and find these elderly aunts they're their mum had told them about um, and they end up having to travel you know trying to avoid ha going into workhouses trying to find something to eat really really hungry um, and just seeing you know it, it gives a really really good look um, in a way that children will understand as well because this is a children's book um, at the Irish famine and how horrible it was and how deadly it was to the Irish people and to the Irish population. And then Wildflower Girl sees the youngest um, child in the family, Peggy. She actually emigrates to America. So we're seeing her new life in America. This one obviously also um, shows what it was like for in terms of Irish emigration to America, which was obviously a very, very big deal in Irish history. We lot of lost a lot of young people to America because there was just no life for them in Ireland, particularly in those years after the famine. But the accents in this are really, really good. And overall it was just, it's just a really excellent book to like listen to an audiobook it's really really quick as well um, and there is a third book and um, which is more about I think home rule in Ireland as well and Irish versus Britain and um, so I'm very looking forward to eventually reading that in audiobook as well. Another book I read recently was The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. This one was read by Steve West. Um, and I actually talked about that in my weekly wrap-up, Just Gone. So I will leave a link to that somewhere as well. But this one was just absolutely brilliant. This is set in um, Russia. So there's the, when the Tsar and Tsarina are in Russia, it's like a YA historical fantasy. Um, so all the accents in this are all Russian accents or Russian accents with a little bit of a French twist for kind of the aristocrats um, in Russia um, who all spoke French. And Steve West just did such a good job with these accents. It was just amazing. I absolutely loved all of his accents. They were just so rich and detailed and perfect for the characters. They just suited the characters so, so much. There was even kind of this evil character at one point and she gave, he gave her this like a real witchy kind of creepy voice and it was just done so well. And he also, for a male narrator, he also did the female voices in this really, really well. I wouldn't have had a complaint about any of the female voices he did. I think he just completely nailed this book on audiobook. Another book I want to talk about is an interesting one and that is Lillian Bockfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney and it was read by Z Sands. And this is a funny one because I didn't like this audiobook at the start. I really didn't enjoy it. Um, it's because... Lillian Boxfish is about an older woman and it's New Year's um, Eve and she's taking a walk through New York and she's kind of talking about her life and reminiscing about her life and meeting different people. And her voice, Z Sans' voice for Lillian Boxfish is very, this very gravelly, older voice and it also has this kind of a real New York kind of voice, real New York accent, which I'm not 100% used to and at the same time there was just something about the voice that really threw me off at first and I really didn't like it but the more I read about it, I, the more I listened I should say and the more I got to know Lillian Boxfish as a character the more Z Sands portrayal of her on audiobook ended up warming, I ended up warming up to it a lot, I ended up really really enjoying it and so by the end of the book I was like that was a really good audiobook, I wasn't completely crazy about the book but the audiobook was really good in the end for me. And the last book I want to talk about is Queen of the Tearing by Erica Johansson and this one was read by Catherine Kelgren and this was a reread for me. I'd originally read this on my Kindle and I decided to reread it um, this year on audiobook and I just loved this one. There were kind of these different kind of voices used in terms of actual 
conversations and dialogue going on and then Kelsey's own thoughts while she was learning to rule her country again um and I just couldn't re recommend this book anymore again like Echo Name Verity this is probably one of my favorite audiobooks of the year I just really really enjoyed it I do actually have the second book Invasion of the Tyranny out at the moment so I'll be listening to that really really soon um on my library app um I absolutely just really really enjoyed that one so cannot recommend that one enough as well so those are all just a few audiobooks that I've listened to this year and that I've really really enjoyed please leave me any of your favorite audiobooks down below and if you have listened to any of these on audiobook as well please let me know and let me know what you think I would really love to know and um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again next time